Hi, and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So the YouTube video that's titled Best Exercises for Overall Health and Longevity, Dr. Peter Atia and Dr. Andrew Huberman, that was produced by the YouTube channel Huberman Lab Clips, is 10 minutes and 34 seconds in duration. Let's break it down and let's just look at the key points. And please remember, now that I've retired, I get to watch between 20 and 30 longevity type videos every day as well as reading articles, blogs, and scientific studies, as well as listening to podcasts when I ruck run and ride my bike. So I only review the videos like this one that I think are gonna give you good longevity value. So although it's a critique of their original content, it's most certainly not a negative criticism. In this video, Dr. Peter Atia and Dr. Andrew Huberman discuss how to enhance both lifespan and health span through various means. They delve into the impact of lifestyle choices on longevity and also overall health risk. Firstly, Peter Atier explains that smoking increases the risk of all-cause mortality by about 40%. This statistic highlights the higher likelihood of mortality at any point relative to non-smokers, emphasizing the cumulative impact over time. Second is high blood pressure. This condition is associated with a 20 to 25% increase in all-cause mortality. High blood pressure is a common risk factor that can be mitigated through lifestyle changes and medical management. Third, they talk about type 2 diabetes, saying it contributes to roughly a 25% increase in all-cause mortality. This underscores the importance of managing blood sugar levels through diet exercise, and if need be, medication. Fourth is muscle mass and strength. Peter Atier notes that low muscle mass significantly correlates with higher all-cause mortality by as much as three times of an increase when compared to those with higher muscle mass. Furthermore, the association between muscle strength and all-cause mortality is even stronger, suggesting that maintaining muscle strength is crucial for longevity. And at number five, they discuss cardiorespiratory fitness, it being one of the most critical factors, and this is measured by VO2 max. The difference in all-cause mortality risk between the lowest and the highest quartiles of fitness can be as much as five times. Peter Atia emphasizes that improving VO2 max through regular structured exercise is possibly the most potent modifiable behavior for reducing your health risks. The pair also provide practical advice on how to enhance your health profile through specific exercises. First is strength training, so engaging in activities that build muscle and strength, such as squats, leg extensions, and dead hangs. These exercises not only improve muscle mass, but also enhance overall strength, which is directly linked to reduced mortality risk. Second, they recommend cardiovascular exercises, they say that regular cardiovascular activity that improves VO2 max, such as running, cycling, or swimming, are highly recommended. They state that these exercises significantly lower the risk of all-cause mortality and improve overall cardiovascular health. They close by advocating for consistency and intensity. They both stress the importance of consistency in exercise routines and the need to maintain a level of intensity that challenges the body, thereby improving overall fitness metrics. Peter Atier then criticizes the focus on dietary supplements and specific diets without first addressing fundamental fitness levels and that supplements and diets should only occur after achieving a baseline of physical fitness which I do have to agree with. My unofficial pillars of longevity in order are diet, and here we're talking about any diet that can be from carnivore at one end to vegan at the other, but it must eliminate all highly processed foods. Second is regular exercise that incorporates strength training and cardiovascular fitness. Third is sleep, and here we're talking about getting between seven and nine hours of sleep per night with a regular bedtime, and a regular wake-up time, preferably without the need for an alarm. Fourth is stress reduction. Obviously, this is easier said than done, but if you are looking to try and incorporate this into your longevity regime, look into meditation, or even plain and simple breathing exercises a la Wim Hof, then and only then should you start to look at supplements. 